Hello, everyone. It is great to see you again. This is Brenda, your host for Your Life Matters with God. It's a pleasure to see you guys today, to be able to share the gospel with you. Just to remind you, with Your Life Matters, what we do is we take worldview issues, align them with the Word of God, and give you a moment to take a pause and go, is my decisions and choices I make honor the Lord? Let me take a pause before I quickly speak and to ensure that what I'm going to say is the words that God wants me to speak to honor him, but also to lead people to salvation. That's what it's all about. So give you a chance to think about what I'm supposed to do. What is my responsibility? How should I respond when life worldview starts to challenge my spirit? And that's why the word of God is so important. It, like it says in Psalms 91, the truth or the word of God is our shield and buckler. It's our protection. And this is why the word of God is so important for us to have. This is why we need to read and meditate on the word. You know, think it over all the time, asking the Lord, Lord, help me to understand what you want me to learn today from this word. How does I apply it to my life or my work life or my business life, my family life? Because by doing this, you're asking the Lord God to help you live that holy life, which is the desires of our heart. So it's so important about that. So let's get started today. All right, because today we're going to talk about things that's that, you know, we're still struggling in basically is who is my authority? Who in the world is my authority? And basically, I just want to say this. The government is not my authority. And the government I'm talking about is the government that we have today. The White House, our local government, it's not my authority. And you're going, well, Brenda, how is that possible? Because they set laws and policies, you know, for us to abide. Well, you know what? We're going to drink deeper into that. So let's get started in prayer, and then we're going to see why our government is not our authority. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just your word and your wisdom, Lord, in helping us to know how to apply the knowledge as we seek understanding from you. We thank you for those who are coming on board and just listening, Lord. And, and because of you interceding into this, I know without a doubt that you are touching their spirit of understanding to help them to learn what it is you want them to know so that they can apply it to their life and their family life. We thank you, Lord, for your truth, which is our shield and buckler. It's our protector. And we know that, Lord, with anything that's taken place, place today, we know that the words that's going to speak truth and never fails in speaking truth is the word of God. And we thank you for your word in Jesus name. Amen. Well, folks, yeah, you know, so much is going on and, and we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, who do we listen to? There's so much going on right now. New administrations coming up with things and you're like, you want to pull your hair out because you know very well what they're trying to do is going against the word of God. It's making our children vulnerable to the evil that can be taken a place upon them. Our schools are not protected anymore because we're not teaching anymore. We're indoctrinating. So much is just taking place. But the thing is, there's not many of us believers who are standing up against these things. We're not putting our voice out there because we think that this government and authority that's over us is our true authority. And I'm going to hear to prove that they are not our true authority. And I want you to at least pay attention to the contrast I'm going to bring to you to understand why uh, from that. Because after all, it's said and done. The bottom line is this. Who do we give account to? It's not our local government. It's not our federal government. It's our heavenly government. And ahead of that heavenly government is God and God himself. And so when we take action, as the Lord says, no matter what you say you do, you're doing it unto the Lord. That should grasp you right there. That, is your, that should be your starting point of understanding. My action in life is that who am I truly doing this for? Because if we're taking action on things that is opposite from the word of God, then you're not doing it for the Lord. You're doing it against him. Because the Lord says, if you're not for him, then we are against him. And I just need to know, why would we want to be against God who created heaven and earth? Why would we want to be against a God who wiped out the earth in a flood 
and able to start it back up again with new growth and vegetation and new life. I don't have that power. Do you? So this is why it's so important about that. The, 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 the word today is coming out here is like, where are the Daniels in this world today? Where are the Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego's of this world today? You know, when I heard that, Joyce Moyers was talking about that today, and it, it got me thinking, where are we? Where are we? Why are we so hesitant to step forward when the Lord unctions us to step forward to stand on the word. We don't have to protect the word because the word has power all to its own. It doesn't need our protection. It needs our obedience. So where are we today in obeying the instructions that's given to us in the word of God? And it's so important in regards to that. And so I want to dive right in because I, I want to, to try to share here what our identity is because I think that's so important is that when we don't know who we are, we truly don't know how to function. We, we truly don't because we, we don't have the guidance. We, we don't have the instructions. We, we don't know what our starting point is in life and how we should be taking this journey. And, and it's so important about that to understand who we are in the Lord and how to stand up against our government in the way that's going to still honor God. So let's go to 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. And this is going to be in the message version. And basically what's happening here is that, you know, Paul is encouraging us um, to take in the word like it's the most sweetest thing that we can ever consume. And, and, and to look at what, you know, what, how God is looking at us. All right, and I'm hopefully this will be a starting point of you grasping on and going, if God sees me this way, then I need to equip myself in the word of God so that I can continue to be how God has chosen me to be. So let's go to 1 Peter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. This is in the message version, and it says, So clean house, make a clean sweep of malice and pretense, envy and hurtful talk. You... Are had a taste of God, now the infant, now like infants at the breast, drink deep of God's pure kindness. Then you'll grow up and mature and whole in God. And so, and this is the reason why. Because here in verse 9 through 10, it says, but see, you are chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly works, Chosen to be holy people, God's instrument to do his work. Now, I want to stop right here because when we hear priestly work, you know, people says, well, I, you know, I, I don't want to be a minister. I don't want to be a pastor. He's not talking about a certain position in the church. He is talking about a characteristic trait of a person as if you're a priest in the church. See, there's a trait. All of us are responsible to do the same thing as if we are. So it says here, priestly work chosen to be a holy people, God's instrument to do his work and speak out for him to tell others of the, of the night and day difference he made for you as he transformed our lives from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. And see, this is so powerful because this is the starting point of your identity because there's many people who want to try to debunk what God has done for us, of how God changed our lives. But see, God is not like us where we take back what we say. Oh, it was just a joke. I didn't mean what I said. Ba -da -da. That's not who God is. God has been honest to us from the very beginning. The deception and deceit and lies is from his enemy. And we open the doors when we practice that. But see, God has always been, and he has never failed, but always been true to us. And it's so important. So let's go to Acts 4, okay? And we're going to do this. And so as you know, I am using my phone here, um, because I want to try to get some of the other versions here. And I, I want to try to bring a clear picture to you in exactly where God is, is coming from. And see, here in Acts chapter 4, what happened was, um, this is when Peter, 
and John was arrested because, well, it, they were they healed a guy that was that needed healing. He was lame, and and he, you know, they they healed him, and the Sanhedrins they just didn't like that at all. All right, they what happened was they didn't like the apostles to teach about Jesus. And they didn't like that they knew that they healed him because they know. And, and see, this is another thing. This just popped in my head. This is another thing. When people attack you who are believers, they're attacking you to prevent you from showing the evidence of God that from your life to others who might want to hear it. And, and that's what our government's all about is to prevent the goodness to be visible so that it can create hope. Because they know that when hope is alive, people are going to be strong enough to break away from them and be strong enough to hold on to Jesus Christ. And that's what the battle is all about here. And so in Acts 4, 13 to 20, all right, and this is Peter and John, they, they were standing in confidence um, because the Sanhedrin's the one thing that they did realize, and I wanted you to grasp this too, because this is another fallacy that we have, that Peter and John, they weren't, they weren't um, high priests. They weren't highly educated men. They were fishermen. And they're looking at them going, these are fishermen. How, how can they tell us about Jesus and, and what to do and what's right? And how are they speaking boldly about, you know, salvation and, you know, uh, well, in regards to you know, repentance and, and you know, it, it, it's just amazing that how God can use anyone. And I just want to encourage you, we need to also break away from listening to people with the degrees at the end of their name, like Dr. Fauci and others out there that they keep pushing in our faces, you know, thinking that because they are this stature, we have to listen to them. no. Because the word of God says so, that's where we need to grasp our reality check, is in the word of God. And so it was so amazing here. And I, I want you to just grasp on to Peter and John. Because the Sanhedrin couldn't figure out how to stop them from speaking about Jesus. And we're going to go to verse 15 on this when it says, and this is the Sanhedrin now. They sent them out of the room, which is Peter and John, so they can work out a plan. And I want you to catch this because, see, our government and those who are against the Lord, they're doing this right now. They just keep doing this. They talk it over. What can we do with these men? By now it's known all over town that a miracle has occurred and that they are behind it. There is no way we can refute that. See, do you like that? And this is what our government is trying to do. This is what even Satan is trying to do by using it through the government is prevent the evidence of Jesus Christ to be seen. Because there's no way they know that people can refute it. And I just want to say this. We need to lift up this pastor up in Alberta, Canada. For his church was shut down, double barriers. All right. Their law enforcement and government put a fence around the church and then miles away, from how the cars enter into the premises, they put a fence around that so that nobody can come in. But this pastor was bold to be on camera to let them know they cannot stop the power of God. They have no authority to shut them down. And folks, this is where we need to be. Are we standing like Daniel or the three Hebrew boys and saying, we will not bow down to your authority? So, but so that it doesn't go any further, look, they, you know, they want to try to silence them with threats. So they won't dare to use Jesus' name ever again with anyone. Do you like that? They're trying to silence them with threats. Isn't that happening today? Aren't we being called names? Isn't our churches being burnt down? Isn't they trying to shut our doors? Even in the synagogues, in I think it was New Jersey or New York, where the police, they went into that and tried to shut their, their, their uh, ceremonies down. Do you understand? So verse 18, they called them back and warned them that they were on no account ever again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John spoke right back. 
whether it's right in God's eyes to listen to you rather than to God, you decide. See, they're not taking that responsibility. They put it back on the Sanhedrins. You decide that because they know what God's going to do. As for us, meaning Peter and John, there's no question we can't keep quiet about what we have seen and heard. And so the thing is, they refuse to be silenced in regards to speaking the name of Jesus and what he has done when Jesus walked on this earth. So the thing is, is that we have an important responsibility to share the gospel, government or no government going to support. And so we need to be able to be bold to stand for the Lord because there are people out there who's going to be slaves to the government's rules, mandates, and policies that needs to be free. Our children are almost being captured. I said almost because it's not complete. And our schools and colleges now they're trying to make it where they're going to force vaccinations on our children without our consent. They, uh, who told me that? And it just blew my mind that they are going to try to set the law to the point where the children can go get the vaccine without parental consent. Folks, this should be a warning sign to everybody that whenever someone decides they're going to do rules or create rules that's going to have our children do things without us as parents, that should be a warning sign that we need to start fighting for our children. Nehemiah 4.14, when it tells us we need to fight for our family, we need to fight for our family. So let's go to Romans 13. And you're saying, well, Brenda, you know, they, they have authority over us. Yes, they do have authority to a point. But let me, let me explain to you why this is so important. Because if we just follow what the government does and it does not align with the word of God, then we are just as guilty as pulling the trigger for people to stumble into that sinful nature. And so this is why it's so important. So... Here in Romans 13, 1 through 5, it, it explains how we should be responsible citizens. Be a good citizen. All governments are under God. I want you to catch that. And I know you, it's going to confuse you, but I'll show you why. All governments are under God. In so far as there is peace and order, it's God's order. Are you catching that first point? Peace and order, it is God's order. And right now, none of the writings have stopped. None of the, the attacks have stopped. None of the name callings have stopped. None of that has stopped. So live responsibly as a citizen. If you're irresponsible to the state, then you're irresponsible with God. And God will hold you responsible. Duly constituted authorities are only a threat if you're trying to get by with something decent. Citizens should have nothing to fear. Do you want to be on good terms with the government? Be a responsible citizen and you'll get on just fine. The government working to your advantage. But if you're breaking the rules right and left, watch out. The police aren't there just to be admired in their uniforms. God also has an interest in keeping order. If you didn't catch that, let me repeat that. God also has an interest in keeping order and he uses them to do it. That's why you must live responsibly, not just to avoid punishment, but also because it is the right way to live. Now, folks, let's take a pause. I want you to think about this. So everything that I read here is any of the government that we have Federal, local, aligns to the characteristic traits that Romans 13, 1 through 4 has talked about. Does any of it? I say not. Because every step that they have taken is to dishonor God. Every step that they have taken was to dishonor God, to hurt our children, to destroy our churches. So this is an example of whether we should obey our government authority or not, because the question you have to ask yourself is, does it align up with God's authority? 
This is where it's at. That th there's nothing to decide. Good, bad. Good government, bad government. It's simple. God doesn't do gray areas. So the thing is, is that this right here is your support and document of authority to inform you that you do not have to abide by everything our government says. Why? Because if it does not align up with the word of God, it is not of God. Because it says that God, all right, will hold us responsible if we take on irresponsibility. And that's what our administration is doing today. That's what our local government's doing today is trying to force us to be irresponsible with our biblical life. The other thing that should also be awakening to you is that the Constitution, that's why the Constitution was written in that format so that we are able to live a holy life, a responsible life, a life that would give us peace, not honor. Um, peace, but not dishonor. And so it is so important here because I like how people do it. They, they want to try to guilt you into going, well, you have to abide by this person. You have to abide. I don't have to abide by anything if it's not aligned up with the word of God. It's just bottom line. Yes, I have to buy by authority because the scripture also talks about, yes, we have to pay our taxes. The scripture says we should. All right. But the thing is, we need to make sure that those resources are going that's not going to contribute or support evil actions and ideas that the government's trying to play. That's the key thing. So taxes does help because it supports our schools, you know, you know, uh, hospitals, you know, all these different things. So we need to have some of that. But when it comes to abortion, that's a no. If an individual wants to do that, and I'm not encouraging them because I'm not in favor of it, but use your own dime. Stop trying to make the world be part of your death sentence. That's all you're doing. And folks, that's all these people are doing when they try to use the federal government to enforce taxes to support these things is to make it seem like we are all in agreement. Just because we're the United States doesn't mean that we're all in agreement with any evil acts that our government wants us to comply with. So the thing is, is that this is where good stewardship comes into play. So let me read another one here. Text, uh, it's going to be Titus. Titus 3, 1 and verse 1. And this is going to still be in the message version here. And it says here, Remind the people to respect the government and be law-abiding, always ready. Are you ready for this? Ready to lend a helping hand. No insults, no fights. God's people should be bright-hearted and courteous. Now let me give it to you in another version here. All right, and it's so important. I want you to grasp this. This is why it's so important to, to have uh, different scriptures here. That was in the message version, but now I'm going to give it to you in the New King James Version. This is Titus 3, and it says, Maintain good works. So remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. Good work. And what does that define? It defines that the good work should be where it has no questions, no doubts, because it's action steps that we're taking that's going to honor God. That's the bottom line to all this. This is what it is. Whether you believe in the Lord or not believe in the Lord, our action steps, all right, has to be, does it Honor God, because this is the deal. The Lord says, you know what? I will take care of the judgment. You need to just back off and leave that alone, because what I pour down on people is going to be for the just and the unjust. So that means nobody's exempt. But when it comes to good work, everybody's responsible. Everybody, believers or not. And the thing is, it's for good works. See, when there's good works, there's no fear.
When there's good works, there's no doubt. When there's good works, there's no anxiety. When there's good works, there's no depression. When there's good works, a person feels safe and comfortable. But when our government is trying to implement or enforce and it makes your spirit feel like it's in trouble, that's a warning sign to tell you there's nothing good going to come out of that package. So let's continue. We're going to go to 1 Peter 2.13. And we're going to be in the message version once again on that. So I want you to, I want you to grasp onto this. It's so important about here because it, it just touched my heart. Um, in regards to this, because I see people, they, they, they're so submitted to the point where they're paralyzed and afraid to do anything, afraid to speak up, afraid to take action. And the thing is, we got to remember, we are warriors for the Lord. We have a responsibility to stand up and let our light shine, not be underneath a table so nobody can't see it, not for a cloth to surround it so nobody can't see it. We are supposed to shine so bright that our enemies cannot see. That's who we are. So let's go to 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17 on the message version. And it says this, make the master proud of you by being good citizens. Respect the authorities, whatever their level. They are God's emissaries by keeping order. They are God's emissaries. Now, now that should be a key thing because the opposite from that means they're Satan's emissaries. See, there's no gray area. The word of God says you, you, can't, you, you, you can't serve two masters. There's only two. God and Satan, there's only two. So you got to choose which way you want to go. So, it is God's will that by doing good, see, by doing good, you might cure the ignorance of the fools who think you're a danger to society. Well, praise God that I am. Exercise your freedom by serving God. Exercise your freedom by serving God, not by breaking the rules. Treat everyone you meet with dignity. Love your spiritual family. Revere God and respect the government. Now, we, we got to respect those that's serving. All right? But it doesn't mean that we obey the things that they are trying to implement that's against the word of God. This here should show you. It should show you that you have authority to stand against this. They are not the final. They are instruments. We have governments who've done awesome things, instruments of God by doing good works. But then we've got governments that are not instrumental and they're doing things of evil works, but it belongs to Satan. There's only two. So the question is, whose authority are you going to be under? See, it's really not the worldly authority that you got to be careful about because it's not the worldly authority I'm talking about here. In all honesty, if you, re if you really broaden it, it's spiritual authority of God or evil authority of Satan. That's it. There's only, there's only the two. And you can recognize it based on the person intent if how he's going to govern. And if it's not of good works, and we have given that person the opportunity to try to correct it and change it by being by petitions, by voting and so forth. Then we know very well that his heart is not of God, but of evil works. And this is why we need to stand up with the word of God, stand up and stand and encourage others. We need to stand for the word of God and do what is right. Be respectful, do things in love, not in hatred, not in revenge, not in vengeance. Because the Lord said, vengeance belongs to me, which is him, not with us. We need to continue to love, forgive, give opportunities, spread the gospel, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out spirits. Encourage people with God's holy word. And when we do that, God's mighty army comes out to fight for us. That's how it works. 
So folks, if you're out there and you're done with the government, you're done being under their authority, and you want to be under authority that does things in love and forgiveness and doesn't hold your past in offense, it's through Jesus Christ, our King. That's where that's at. If you want to be under authority who does not take your past and use it as a weapon to demise you and humiliate you, that's through Jesus Christ, our King. That's where your true love is going to boil right over. This is where God says, when you come to me, I'm not going to remember your past. I'm forgetting it from as far as the East is from the West. I don't take time to remember your past. I take time to try to help you live for today so that you can gain what's in the future, which is heaven and eternal life. So if you're ready to let go of the authority that you were under and be under the authority of the Lord God Almighty who governs in love, let's take a pause and repeat these words after me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my will so that I am governed under your will, O Lord. I accept the Holy Spirit to guide me into all truth. Take my life and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have mentioned and, you know, spoke those words, look, I encourage you. Find a place that's going to help you to win and be under the right authority, which is the authority of love, grace, and mercy under God. If you don't have a place, you don't know where to go, look, I invite you to experiencechurch.tv. You can watch us two ways, one live stream, all right, at experiencechurch.tv, 930 and 11 Pacific Standard Time, or you can come in our doors. We are open from 915 and 11 here at South Hill at 10012 122nd Street East in Puyallup. This is Brenda, your host, with Your Life Matters with God. It truly does. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.